Well, here we are. Good morning, everybody. Uh, praying for those those folks down in Texas. Uh, they've got a lot of flooding. Uh, Port Aransas, Texas, uh, got a lot of flooding. Uh, my friend uh, David Bendet was uh, assessing some of his damage for his coffee shop yesterday. He had two feet of uh, seaweed in the coffee shop. Well, that was crazy. But uh, they need a lot of help down there, and we're trying to help them. And if you guys want to help, uh, you can. Uh, you can donate to our ministry if you want to, and all of that's going to go down to uh, the guys down in Corpus Christi and and they're going to be helping people down there. Churches are getting together, and we're trying to get together with them. And uh, even the church at uh, Upper Room Dallas, my friend Michael Freeland, he's uh, getting his folks to help. And if you guys want to help, if there's any way you can help, it'd be great. Uh, if you want to donate to us, you can go to our uh, website, livingvineministries.org. And just press the donate button and then just uh, there's a place where you can say what it's for what your donation is for you can also go to Rock City Church and be able to donate that way and it'll say hurricane and you can just press that button either way let's let's try to help them if we can uh, we've already had some folks uh, gave to uh, our ministry yesterday we appreciate that and uh, we're going to send everything that we can uh, to them down in Corpus Christi. Lord, be have mercy on the po po folks in Houston. Man, that that's a rough one there with all the flooding. Well, this morning I want to read a couple of scriptures and uh, maybe get right down to it. Uh, this is a simple one, but yet a profound one that I that I learned uh, by watching my own son. He was a little thing back then. Of course, all of my children have grown and gone. So uh, I'm getting to be one of those older folks. <laughs> I'm going to read a couple of scriptures here. In uh, Matthew 18, verse 2, uh, this is Jesus. Um, it says, then Jesus called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them and said, assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as a, as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of God. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. Boy, that is, that's pretty powerful. We keep trying to grow up and God's saying, you know, grow backwards. <laughs> because it's not much for a little child to love. Uh, you can look at children, they can be arguing with one another. You tell them to stop and they'll just stop sometimes and, and then go back to playing with one another. When a child says, I'm sorry, you know, he goes back to playing his toys instead of uh, making the the other friend uh, earn his forgiveness. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, I want to get like that again, don't you? And there's so much power in, in walking as a little child. And verse John, John 15, it says, you, just as Jesus, verse 16, you did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I, these things I command you, that you love one another. That's the key there, is that we love one another. Because the child, uh, it, it doesn't think of who he should love. A child will just just start loving without even thinking about it, you know. Uh, I've got several friends that have children uh, around us right now, and it's amazing how they would, some of them would just run up to a, a person and just, you know, tell them hello and have no opinions, have nothing in their heart toward them. They're just, 
just basically assuming that the other person will love them as well. And uh, I love that about a child. When you look in a child's eyes, uh, there's nothing there that is negative. Uh, there's no hooks in their eyes. And uh, of course, when we look at each other, you know, uh, while we're talking to one another, we're gauging one another, not gazing, but gauging one another, judging one another. We don't realize that we're doing that, but we're trying to fill each other out as we're talking with one another. And we can all see it in each other's eyes as we're trying to, sometimes when you're trying to get your point across, you're looking into the person to see if they're really getting it. And uh, that's really a type of fear if you really want to get down to it. We won't teach you about that, but uh, there's all types of things that you can see in people's eyes. But uh, in a child's eye, when he comes up to you to say hello, uh, there's nothing there. Uh, there's nothing he really... Uh, is wanting from you. He's not trying to figure out if you, you're getting his hello, if it's really uh, from love. You know, a lot of times when we when we say hello to people or we say we love people, you know, and tell them we love them, we, we're still looking for a response or a reaction, uh, a reward, if, if I can say that, from someone. And you can see it in someone's eyes when they say that to you. And uh, we, as we grow up older, we we're kind of subconsciously taught uh, to get a reward from someone or a response from someone. But uh, and that fear of man, you know, teaches us in life. But when you're a child, there's no fear of man. It's just, you know, they, they say, I love you, and that's it. They mean it. They're not looking for anything from you. They're, they're just expressing exactly what they feel toward you, and they mean it. And they, it, it's amazing. Uh, there's such power in that type of love and that type of speaking that uh, I want to be converted back to that. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of walking up to people trying to gauge them. You know, uh, I just want to be love. And uh, that was the way it was being around Jesus, uh, is that if he told you something, uh, you could look into his eyes and there was no hooks there was no mixture in what he said when he would speak and be pure love. And uh, it would blow you away because you could look into his eyes and see that he's, my gosh, he's really meaning that. Uh, there's nothing else he wants from me. Or uh, when he said, you know, go and sin no more, um, he wasn't looking for me to repent something back to him or a response. Uh, he was really wanting me to have a great life. And uh, that would blow you away in itself. So pure love that comes out of, G the pure love that came out of Jesus is like a child. It's childlike. Uh, there's nothing in there that wants something back from you. That's what a lot caused a lot of people to follow him. And that's what caused a lot of deliverance to happen in a lot of people. Because with pure love, there's pure power. And... Uh, I'll read another one. Let's read that, this one. It's in John 6. I'll start in verse 4. The Lord showed me this years ago, but it's pretty cool. It says, Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. John 6, verse 4. Then Jesus lifted his eyes, and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. They're all figuring it out. They're trying to figure out, Lord, you know, what's the deal? You know, you can't even hardly feed these people. It's going to take tons of money. And so they're thinking of good and evil, you know, and, and trying to, they're worrying and running around. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Jesus is wanting to feed people. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? So you can imagine this lad uh, has seen Jesus, he knows Jesus, and he knows whatever he has, he's going to give to Jesus because Jesus can feed him with it. He has no doubt, he has no fear. And so the lad is bringing this barley loaves and two fish. And then Jesus 
I can, I'm pretty sure looked at the lad and said, make the people sit down. And, uh, now there, it says, now there was much grass in that place. Of course that he's fulfilling Psalms 23. If you want to read it, he makes me lie down in green pastures. So he's making them lie down in green pastures right now. So the men sat down in the number of about 5,000. Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed it, distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish and as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, uh, said, this truly is the prophet whom, who is to come into this world. And I remember the Lord t taking me this place one time when I was reading this thing, because the, the word of God is still alive today and everything Jesus did is eternal. So this still goes on. And uh, I was standing there watching this happen. And after it was over, I was looking at all the baskets. I couldn't believe what was going on. And the Lord looked at me and smiled. And he said, who fed the 5,000? I said, you did, Lord. And uh, he said, no. And he looked over at the, at the baskets and there was that little boy. He was just smiling, smiling at Jesus. <laughs> and it was the little boy that fed the 5,000 through Jesus. And uh, it's because he was childlike. He didn't have fear. Everybody else had fear. He didn't have fear. He had faith. It was just raw faith. Fear wasn't mixing in his mind. It wasn't even controlling his faith. He wasn't saying, I hope this works to give it to Jesus. You know, that's kind of what we do. We're, we're, we do the same thing. I hope this works, man. By faith, we're having it. And by faith, I, by God, I have, I'm, I'm commanding it coming in. And we don't realize we're in such fear trying to use that faith and those statements. Sometimes we even try to get our words right and get loud enough to, to maybe God to hear us and maybe our faith would wake up. But, uh, there, but with this guy, with this little lad, he, he didn't have any fear. So uh, he fed the 5,000. There was raw power that, and faith that came out of this young boy in Jesus for it to be done. And that's the way we're going to be. That's the way the Lord is trying to conform us. To, he's trying to convert us to as a little child. And I love that about uh, children. I love that about what I want to be. I want to be that childlikeness to where I have such love for Christ that that's all I have. And if I have love for Christ, I've got everything. If you have love for Christ, you can love your brother. You can love your enemies. You can love just about anything that comes in your path because you're not thinking good and evil anymore. You're not judging anymore before you love. You're like a lamb going to slaughter. You're just trusting your father, not trusting yourself. So anyway, there's one more. It says... Uh, this is in Ephesians uh, 4, Ephesians 3, verse 14. It says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, man, may be able to comprehend with all the saints, that is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Man, if there's anything I want is that. It passes knowledge. Man, how many of us addicted to knowledge more than love? Have you tried to find knowledge so that you can love? Have you tried to read a lot of books and try to get understanding of love so that you can love? And you don't realize that you're, you're using a formulated way to get to love. 
even though God can, even with it through his mercy, sometimes God will sneak himself, humble himself in your formulated thinking of trying to get knowledge to love. And he'll slip his presence in there and just whack you. And then uh, we don't realize he's trying to show you it's by just seeking him. You'll find, you'll uh, find that love, but he'll come in there where you're walking down the wrong path, trying to get it the wrong way. And yet he'll humble himself and find you in that place of a formulation. And then of course, a lot of us don't get the, <laughs> don't get the message. And we think it's because we read this book and it's because we got it through this knowledge way. And then we stopped doing all these five steps, but really it had nothing to do with you. It had everything to do with God seeing that you're going down the knowledge path instead of the love path. And so he'll come in and show himself right where you are. I love that about God. But he, those that really get the message will turn away from that path and really start seeking the Lord instead of seeking knowledge because it, it love the love of Christ passes all knowledge. And it's all the power in the world. It's what made this universe. It's what made me and you. We're made up of that. And the story that I have is I was, uh, this was when I, back in my younger days, I was really learning how to minister. Uh, I may have had a lot of visitations from the Lord, but uh, I was still learning how to carry it how to uh, minister in the presence of our King. And I remember I was in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, and I was at this small little storefront church and the place was full of people and full of people there was probably 120 people, but uh, the whole little storefront was packed. I'm sure some of us have been to little storefronts before of little churches which I love. I, I would much rent minister in a small place than a big place, to be honest with you, because it's, it gets more intimate. Um, uh, a lot of people are trying to get bigger. I'm trying to get smaller, <laughs> but, uh, long story short, I, I, I was ministering and, and, uh, there was a, a warlock in the back of this place. And, he was pacing back and forth and I recognized him and, but I was young and stupid and, uh, at the, I ministered. And then at the time of, you know, when it was time to pray for people, I had prayed for everybody. And, and then here comes this young man uh, that was a, a warlock and, uh, he walked right up to me and he had scars on him and, and I knew what he was there for. And I asked him, I, I looked at him, he had this really angry look on his face and he was just standing there as though, you know, all right, let's draw, you know? Uh, and, uh, I looked at him and I said, Hey, you've come to challenge me, haven't you? And he said, yes. Now you gotta understand. I was a little bit, uh, intimidated back then. Um, uh, you know, the more the more ch opportunities you have like this is the opportunities to get free of your, all your fear. So I was still intimidated. So I'm still have a little bit of fear going on. And I, and I looked behind him and, and behind him was a, a devil or a spirit. And that spirit was looking over it. It looked like he was looking over his shoulder and that spirit was just angry at me and it was gnarling at me. And I could, I knew that this spirit was controlling this guy. And I was about to, uh, say to that spirit, be gone and, and get him out of there. And if I could, you know, uh, notice that spirit and then cast him out, uh, then this boy would be free or this warlock would be free of the spirit that was controlling him. And, uh, I didn't realize what was going on. And, and I looked at the young man and I was looking at that spirit at the same time. And I was just about to tell that spirit to leave. And the Lord whispered very quickly in my ear. And he said, he said, you might want to look again because he's trying to get your attention, that spirit. 
And so the Lord, uh, basically I had to repent inside because I was assuming what I was doing was right. And I didn't realize that when I, where I was standing, there was this like a realm or a space of power that was around me. And it was God's power. It was his love and care for people. And I can't tell you how bright it was. I couldn't see it in the natural, but when God opened my eyes to see it, it was so beautiful. And as I saw it, it was changing me. It was changing my attitude toward this young man. It was even changing my attitude toward the demon. It was crazy. There was a confidence that was coming upon me. And then I looked at the demon and the demon was not standing next to the boy next, uh, right behind him. Oh, that's Allie. She's knocking on the door. Come on, Allie. No. You're late. She's late for God's stories. You overslept. What are you doing? So, uh, I thought the, the, the demon standing next, right next to the person, right next to this young boy. But when the young boy stepped into that realm of God's power, the devil had to step outside, had to stay outside of that realm. So I was looking at a devil that was not around the young man at all. He had to leave once he stepped into the realm, into the presence of God, because nothing that is a, of not of God can stay in the presence of God, right? But I thought it was actually in next to us, and it was trying to get my attention so that if I, I looked at it and cast supposedly cast it out, I would do it in the flesh, and it would it would shut down that realm, and the the spirit would be able to attack me and stay with the young boy. And boy, that was that was something to learn because I didn't realize that that spirit was not in, with that boy. I, uh, I, I realized that it was, uh, I thought it was with the boy, but then after I saw it, it was not with the boy. But if you give honor to the, the spirits instead of God and focus and not focus on God, man, you're gonna have a time. <laughs> And so I realized, my goodness, what do I do now? And the Lord said, the Lord said, well, he's free, but he doesn't realize it. As soon as he stepped into this realm of my power, the boy is free. The only thing you're looking at is his mind and the way it's been programmed. And soon as I, as soon as he said that to me, and that spirit was, has now realized that my eyes are open and now he's upset because he can't come in while, uh, where me and the young boy is talking and suddenly my son, which was, I think he was six or seven years old. Yeah, I think he was six, six years old. Good morning, Emma. And so, uh, he walked up, he walked up out of nowhere. And when he walked up, he looked at the young man and the young man looked at him and he had, my son had this smile on his face <laughs> and the, and he looked at him and he said, he said, he said, you're like Prince Caspian. And the, and when he, when he, the, when my young uh, son said that it was so pure and so of love, you could tell it, you could see it hit this young man. And when it hit him, it, it's almost like he went backwards. He just looked at him like surprised. And he said, you're Prince Caspian. And he said, and you're a great fighter. And he had this smile on his face of innocence and power. I've never seen so much power come out of my young boy, but yet it was so innocent. It wasn't spiritual. It was love. And, uh, and when he, after he said that, he said, okay, bye. And he turned around and left as soon as he said it. And this warlock looked at me and he said, how did he know that? I said, how did he know what? And he goes, when I was young, I used to watch that movie. He said, I pretended that I was Prince Caspian. And he said, and I am a fourth degree black belt. I am a great fighter. 
And when he said that, the power of God hit him so hard, he fell into my chest. The spirit had to walk off into darkness. I saw this realm of like a, a door open up and then the, the devil had to walk back into darkness where he belonged. And the young uh, warlock fell into my chest and started crying. He was completely delivered. And uh, you know what he whispered at to me? He, the, the, uh, the ones that are in witchcraft, they always whisper one thing. And he whispered while he was crying, he said, this is the real Jesus. And I've always asked them, you know, why do you say this is the real Jesus? And most of the time they say, it's because you loved me and you knew who I was. And what they're trying to say, I've now noticed is what they're trying to say is that you loved me without any judgments. And he saw that with my young boy. He saw that with my childlike boy, my childlike faith that, or his childlike faith that was coming out. He looked in my son's eyes and he could see innocence. He could see no hooks. Uh, he could see no judgment. And and even my boy, I've learned a lot from that. Even my boy had no intimidations from this warlock uh, because there's no, he hasn't been, he hasn't been taught how to judge the right way. He was just loving this, this young man. And the only thing he saw was Prince Caspian and he saw that he was a great fighter. But I saw, you know, I was trying to discern demons and, you know, and how to cast him out and formulate this and formulate that. And God was delivering me, delivering me just as much as he was the warlock. And then my young boy, which is childlike, comes up and says one, two innocent words to basically to this warlock, which completely frees him. And I believe, yes, do you cast out uh, devils by the word of God? Yes. You do, but you've got to have the mind of God to have the word of God. And you've got to walk in the spirit as Jesus walks in the spirit. And you can say, if you say, hey, I see you as Prince Caspian, you're Prince Caspian and you're a great fighter. Those are words of God from a, from a childlike, pure heart that go into a person that is a warlock and completely frees them because it has no mixture. And it totally freed this young man. I sat there and held him for I don't know how long. He cried and then he confessed all of his stuff and what he was walking in. And, you know, and I'm crying because I now see that he's just a young boy that's been messed up. But before I was seeing demons and, you know, and trying to figure out how to cash them out and, you know, and be the minister of, uh, I guess a false prophet, you know, you know, I was being prophet stupid. And, uh, through the love of Christ, God not only delivered that young, uh, warlock, but they delivered this young minister. You know, both of us were actually flowing in the wrong direction. And, uh, he didn't realize it. Of course, I didn't tell him I had a little bit of pride back then. I got delivered just as much as he did. You know, and it was through my young boy, my young son. So uh, that's where we want to go. I mean, I cried. I, I, I cried with the young boy. He didn't realize I was crying over him because I was being delivered. I wanted to thank him for coming up to me so that I could learn from God. Uh, it was just a wild situation that God put me in. And I still have those type of situations. It seems like the older I get, the grumpier I get, you know. And uh, you would think the closer you get to God, it would be wonderful. But yet, it's not. It, you start seeing more of yourself the closer you get to God. And uh, I'm kind of like Paul in, in his latter days of walking with God. You know, he was an apostle of apostles, a servant of servants, and all types of things in the beginning. And at the end of his life, after getting really close to God, he says, I'm a sinner of sinners. Because he could see all of his old stuff. All of his old stuff would come up, and he would have to battle it, you know. And uh, that's what happens when you choose to get closer to the Lord. And uh, you start seeing more yucky stuff about yourself and you have to start letting it go or overcoming it with the spirit of God and with his love. But don't forget that. 
You don't have to know a lot to free people. The only thing you have to know is God. If you can walk with God's love, then that love will come out of you. And you sometimes will not even know it, that you're speaking a word of God. I mean, whoever t told us that we've got to know that we're speaking the word of God, what if we could be consumed by love itself? And what we say has love on it. And it start freeing people. Could our eyes get clear again? To where we have nothing in them any longer. We have no longer a haughty look. We no longer have impurities in our eyes of thinking about, thinking and judging people. Could we be like our my young son and just be innocent and walk up to people and, and have nothing, not want anything back and just tell them who they are because we're seeing truly who they are and we're not trying to change them. We can't see good and evil anymore. The only thing we can see is God's love through our eyes. For people and when you have that the only thing you can see is what God created not what the enemy has created because we don't war with flesh and blood we war with darkness we war with principalities and powers rulers of darkness and uh, but the way we rule is that we impart love we speak God's word through with his love being in us and that love would be in us it, and it give us strength and the, and love would have its deep deep work in us in our innermost being if there's anything god wants to change is your inner part not your actions just your inner part the way you think and the more you hang around the lord the more you seek him instead of knowledge it's amazing the stuff that you learn it's amazing the transformation that you have in your life and the challenges and opportunities that you have to love that come along in your life. So if I could tell you anything like I did, uh, be converted as a child. Uh, look upon people as a child would. Love them without any hooks. It's amazing. I hope that helps. I hope you learned something. I know I did. Uh, that day I was just as delivered as the warlock. All right. We sure love you guys. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. Keep praying for the folks in Texas. And, and, uh, if you want to help, you can go to our website and help through that. And we're sending everything to them. And I talked to him last night and, uh, you know, Corpus Christi didn't get hit real hard. It's the more of the flooding. Uh, it's crazy that uh, David said that the folks at Port Aransas, the beach people, the people that were right on the beach didn't get hit that hard. It was the Bay Area on the other side, the surge, it lifted up all the water in the Bay Area and it's flooded everything. And uh, that's how everything got to, uh, demolished and, and ruined. It was, uh, that's amazing that nobody on the beach side, a lot of the houses, they didn't get hit. It's the, uh, the Bay area that lifted up and the surge, it, it flooded the whole island there. Boats are everywhere. Boats are underwater and so forth. And seaweed is in all the businesses. And, uh, man, we've got to pray for those folks and try to help them. So if you can, you can go to our website and, give there. We're going to give it to them. We're going to try to help them. And, or you can go to Rock City Church and uh, get on their website and give to them. Listen, if you've got it, if you can help, let's do it. Bible says it. If you've got the, the if not right then, if you've got the, the, the substance to help somebody, just do it. Don't wait and say, bless you and let them go, you know, or I'll pray for you. Let's actually do love. All right. We love you guys. You guys hang in there. Be converted as a child this week. Love like my son did. All right. Talk to you later. Sure love you. Bye-bye.